Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar. We have a very exciting topic that we wanted to talk to you about today. Um, and uh, yeah, today we're going to talk about technology, most specifically technology that uh, I know a lot of you, if not most of you, love. So we're going to talk about uh, MVC in specific uh, and talk about the latest and greatest in HTML and front-end development and all those things in the technology stack that we love, AngularJS, Bootstrap, and how they match and map into an enterprise infrastructure. So um, what, um, what we will talk about today is the introduction of Sitefinity version 8.0 and what it brings to the table um, for you as developers and ar architects and how you can build the next generation of enterprise applications while still working with the cleanest, most modern technology that you like. So a uh, quick introduction. My name is Svetla Yankova. You can see my Twitter handler on the slide below. So feel free to reach out at any time. I am a product marketing manager for, uh, for Telerik Sitefinity. Uh, however, uh, don't worry, there will be no marketing talk today. My background is in developing for Sitefinity for a long, long time. Um, and I'm a huge fan of MVC, a huge MVC enthusiast. So hopefully uh, we'll get to show you guys some of the things that you can take directly into practice in building out, uh, in building out applications with technology you, you love. So speaking of, um, you know, one little parallel that I like to do uh, when we talk about a modern application versus an enterprise application, enterprise infrastructure, um, it's kind of like this. There's, uh, there's this house right, right nearby, it's about 20 miles from me right now, uh, in San Jose called the Winchester House that uh, really reminds me uh, of, of what uh, quote unquote enterprise infrastructure feels like if you're if you're working with um, delivering a, uh, enterprise applications the frameworks that they're based on um, they need to be very mature right so uh, what happened actually with this house that you see in the background is um, this woman Sarah Winchester was told by a medium um, that she would not be haunted by ghosts if she starts building a house. Uh, it never stops. So she built 24-7 for 30 years. And the place is huge. It takes most of West San Jose and it has, you know, hundreds of rooms and bathrooms and kitchens and doors and hallways and every possible nook and cranny you can think of. But every now and then there's things like uh, a door to nowhere because the complexity of it just you know, became so out of place that there's staircases to nowhere, doors that lead to nowhere. You kind of don't know how to get from the first floor to the second floor. So um, enterprise uh, infrastructures, and especially if you work with a lot of enterprise software, if you develop for a lot of enterprise software, it is very mature. It has the 17 kitchens. It, it is scalable. It can take over all of West San Jose in this little metaphor uh, because the purpose of it being enterprise is it, it needs to have had time to develop the features and the functionality that the enterprise need, which is very wide set of features and very deep set of features, very complex set of features. So developing and extending would be like kind of adding a kitchen to that house. Uh, it would be uh, sort of clunky and it would look funny and you may have a door to nowhere. Well, at the same time, modern applications, modern application development, if you just start with a brand new bootstrap MVC Angular app, um, it feels new, it fe feels fast, clean, simple. If you compare the, let's say, the out HTML output to it, and if you look, look at the source code of what gets generated, if it's a web application, you feel good about it, right? Because it's, it's extremely clean. Uh, but at the same time, it may not have 17 kitchens, right? At the same time, if you're building something from the ground up with a technology you love, uh, then you end up reinventing the wheel a lot. You have to build, uh, you know, user membership. You have to build any kind of infrastructure. And God forbid, if you have to build some kind of a backend uh, management system, uh, well, then you end up rebuilding a lot of things that have essentially been figured out for and a lot of enterprise features that 
you need, but you end up building in from scratch, which you don't want. So, so that there's a fine balance. Uh, but what it down, boils down to is we want our HTML to look like this. You know, we want a super clean uh, output that loads in uh, 100 milliseconds or less, and we want to be able to control every single output, every single component of everything that we write. Right, so that's why we love MVC. But at the same time, we want our uh, infrastructure to look like this. You know, us magically delivering um, components and packages that get deployed all over, all over the world automatically, that get upgraded automatically. And there's a little rainbow between uh, dev and ops, and it all works magically together in a clean, automat automated, continuously integrated infrastructure. So we want to have that, and it takes a while to get there. Um, and at the same time, uh, purely speaking, because today we're going to be speaking uh, about content management, uh, uh, but at the same time we're going to be extending the talk on a wider set of application. But speaking of content management, your client is very often uh, the marketing department, and we want them to be happy as well, which re requires a slew of other features that, you know, uh, I, as a developer, may personally not care about, but a marketer, marketer would. So we have to develop that synergy and de deliver those features to marketing so that we don't respond to tickets every single day saying, can you change this? Can you do that? Oh, hey, I need another field in my form. Oh, hey, can you make this field do this and not that? And things like that. So, um, so taking all into this account, we we basically talk to a lot of you guys. I know a lot of you in here today are are, are Sitefinity customers. A lot of you are not. So we we've ta we've tried talking to all of you and come up with the perfect cleanest concept for a new kind of platform that solves all these issues. Um, and so what I like to introduce today is the Sitefinity 8.0 platform that really took all these things into account. So on the the enterprise side, um, you have um, all the different components that really uh, really make something enterprise. You know, you have the the marketing features on a very very advanced fine tuned level to to make the marketing department happy, to give them all the personalization, all the analytics, all the predictive analytics, and things like that. Uh, then on the delivery, deployment, scalability perspective, you get all the, the infrastructure to deploy anywhere, to set up any kind of environments, to make these environments talk to each other, synchronize, uh, to support an infrastructure where you may have 80 brands in 17 countries, each of which has three languages, all that type of stuff. Uh, are all bundled together in one package with very, very wide and very deep enterprise set of features. Um, and at the same time, you also have the data integration story with multiple enterprise connectors and um, a framework to include data integration to any system you can think of, which is another huge part of the complexity of enterprise application. But there's another component of enterprise application that is a little bit different. With, with all these features and with all that maturity in features, we as developers and as marketers uh, and as architects are diligent about utilizing the most modern type of development because it will last us for the next, dec next decade plus and because we want to align to standards. So within enterprise applications, we noticed as we talked to you guys that you want absolute and full control over what's going on. And so any type of custom logic that you develop, granted, we can take to a minimum, we can provide a lot of things out of the box, but any type of custom logic, any type of custom presentation, any type of template, any type of view, um, anything that gets shown to the client, you need clean, full control over. So we provided a modern development framework that is based on HTML5 and MVC, and that helps you utilize these technologies like Angular JFs, like Bootstrap, Candy UI, MVC, in their purest and cleanest form uh, in order to develop. So, in essence, uh, this is an enterprise 
MVC system. And it goes beyond that because, you know, um, when I talk about um, MVC, I realize that oftentimes most of the coding that I do in MVC, most of the development is actually front-end development. So it's, it's an enterprise MVC system, but the huge component of it is supporting the front-end development and the, the clean development concepts that, that HTML5 brings to the table. Um, and um, you might be wondering, you know, how um, how exactly does that happen? How does Telerik Sitefinity content management system um, that uh, has been around for a while b are, is able to support all that? So I wanted to, to share with you the, the timeline and, and give you a quick peek in, in the history of the product to give you a better understanding of, of basically how everything comes into place. Now, again, a lot of you may not be familiar with, with Sitefinity as a product, so just a little bit of history here. Uh, Telerik was founded in 2002, uh, it, which is, uh, by the way, the same year that I believe the first version of ASP.NET came out. Um, and Telerik's grassroots, you know, its, its entire roots uh, back in 2002 are in the .NET community and supporting the .NET ecosystem with beautiful experiences, starting with the RAD editor. The RAD editor happens to be kind of Sitefinity's grandfather. As the years go by, people adopted the editor and all the other components that Telerik brought, the grid, the editor, the tree views, the, uh, all the different widgets and controls. And we, we realized that often these things are used to build backends for, for web applications and websites. Um, and so we took all our knowledge and all our components into one framework that contained um, everything we knew about building beautiful UI and about .NET extensibility, we put that into Sitefinity. Now, um, .NET matured and, and sort of changed. There was a little bit of a fork in the road uh, with, uh, with the developments in MVC3. Uh, Microsoft themselves realized that the uh, bring desktop development into web doesn't work. You need to work with pure web concepts, and so MVC was born. And by the time two, uh, 2011 came, MVC matured. Um, and so what we did is we saw all these trends of, you know, um, needing to support you guys for the next decade plus, and of needing to support the latest and greatest technology in a seamless manner with, with one-click upgrades, with, with a beautiful flow, with an engine that will support MVC um, and uh, dynamic content and dynamic data and things like that. So we released kind of around the same time was, as MVC3 was released, we released Sitefinity 4, which had uh, which was a complete re-architecture. So we took down the, the, the Sarah Winchester house, if you will, um, and we built something more modern with a brand new architecture to be able to support in a future-facing fashion all these kind of concepts. So uh, as the timeline involved, um, um, evolved, we started introducing things like MVC support and Razor support and responsive design, which marks the beginning of Sitefinity 8.0 and something we call Project Feather. So Project Feather is something that started in 2014, actually beginning, end of 2013, beginning of 2014. And it's an effort to not only rewrite basically uh, all the functionality that we've provided to you within Sitefinity, all the controls, all the widgets, all the UI elements to rewrite them within a modern MVC Angular based framework. Um, but it's also an effort to provide a framework to you as well so that you can build these enterprise applications in an extremely clean, extremely modern fashion. And that all brought us here to Sitefinity 8.0, which involves that component. It's a major component of uh, our strategy facing in the future to continue to support you in that direction, building, uh, building in those MVC blocks, those uh, front-end development blocks, and staying on track with the latest and greatest technology. We re-architected once in 2011 that allowed us to do it, and so we're going forward in incredible speed with weekly updates and providing more and more to the framework. So uh, let's talk about the framework for a second there. This is essentially how we imagine 
CMS development and application development in general would look like. Uh, see, development has a few components. There's the infrastructure, which is the uh, thing that carries most enterprise complexity, right? The ability to support multiple sites with multiple languages, single deployment options, the workflows, the um, permissions, the membership management, and things like that. This is the part that you don't want to write yourself. This is complex, and it takes a lot of years to mature. Uh, and then you have the data layer, um, which, um, which again is a very complex layer because you need to support any kind of data structure. You need to support not just you know st stupid data tables somewhere, but you need to support relationships and hierarchies between data and data integration and data entry um, and um, UI and all these types of things. So here what we decided is to provide you with a framework uh, that helps you do all that. So all you do is define the structure and style the templates. Um, and you get the full infrastructure, the full API, the full extensibility to be able to do anything on top of that. And then you get the logic in the presentation. Um, and so logic and presentation is sort of where you want to get more control over. So here we provided uh, APIs and MVC frameworks for you to control and add any kind of logic, both to the front end of your application as well as to the back end of your applications. Um, and the ability to cleanly control the presentation with nothing but pure HTML5, Razor, um, as well as control logic using AngularJS uh, in, in a designer framework that I'll talk about later. So the arrows here indicate that essentially we envision that as we go up in this chart, you get um, the desire to have more control. So we try not to get involved. We try not to override anything and give you the full control here. We, we will generate the defaults. We'll take you 90% of the way um, and let you control every single angle bracket, every single line of code that gets presented uh, in that part. Uh, but we take care of the bottom part, right? We take care of the data and the infrastructure and give you those hooks and extension points wherever you might need them to be able to support all that enterprise in infrastructure in a scalable way. So um, essentially, uh, I've thrown this name um, around a bit, but Essentially, what we're talking about is uh, this concept called Sitefinity Feather. So this is a project that was built uh, that specifically covers um, uh, that specifically covers these components that I talk about. So the component of having an MVC framework for you to develop any kind of custom logic, of having an HTML5 fr framework integrated with, with Bootstrap and Semantic UI and essentially any other front-end framework so that you get to control the presentation through means of MVC layouts and, um, and Razor templates and Razor views and so on. Um, as well as an Angular JS component, which is uh, which is kind of an intermediate layer. It's an interesting layer that lets you build experiences not just for the front end user, but also build unique experiences for the back end user. So that you, as an enterprise developer, get to deliver an application um, that then business units can take over and start taking care of and maintaining by themselves. So we don't get that stream of emails of different change requests. We essentially defer. Um, a lot of the uh, change management to business. So whatever type of control they want, we can develop for them in a very clean framework. So uh, huge benefits all throughout uh, Project Feather. It's built to be responsive by default, uh, aligned with modern framework. It takes the economies of scale into account so you can do things like continuous delivery. Uh, it's all based on pure standards because, as we know, technology changes every day. So your best bet is to align with standards and evolve with standards as, as this helps you uh, really run as fast as you can as a developer. So extremely, extremely clean and fast. You have control over every single line of code that gets rendered. And um, it's all out. Uh, it's all open source. So we provide a series of open source components, all a series of different widgets uh, that are essentially a rewrite of all Sitefinity functionality. And we let you reuse these components and look at them and, and take every little piece of the puzzle and reuse them into your own application. 
So um, I know I know I've talked for a little bit today. Uh, I just wanted to present this concept to you, and we're going to jump into an interesting demo um, where we're going to talk about essentially the core components of an enterprise project. Now I'm going to build a a web application pretty much from scratch with MVC and Sitefinity and um, and Bootstrap and a bunch of other components uh, and um, just by doing that, uh, we'll show uh, some of the concepts uh, that enterprise projects have to deal with. So complete control over templating, being to reuse templating, being able to defer templating to a third party agency, complete control over data, dynamically being able to change data structure, how data behaves and have full control over that data, naturally be able to support uh, mobile devices, automatically and um, also be able to, to deliver something to the business user so that they are able to support uh, uh, different mobile devices. And of course, we're going to talk uh, a little layer further into some of the complexities of delivery, of delivering this web application. So if you have you know, 15 servers in 15 countries with differences between each country and shared code. How do you support things like continuous integration? I'm going to touch very little on that since we this is a wider topic, but how do you support uh, delivery, synchronization, staging, and things like that? Um, and then, of course, we're going to talk about developing any, any kind of custom logic, um, anything you can think of from uh, from something basic, like presenting some kind of con content to something completely sophisticated, you know, like a booking system, ticketing system, or anything like that, and how you can utilize the infrastructure that Sitefinity um, uh, gives you. And I'll jump into the demo a little bit. I just wanted to share a, a, a quick uh, quote that uh, I personally really love because it really explains kind of how all the pieces of the framework that I'm going to talk about today uh, come together. Um, and that's uh, the fact that people are now able to very easily support enterprise infrastructure with the Feather project. They develop, they touch nothing but NDC, Razor, and um, you know HTML and JavaScript. Uh, and they are able to maintain that, deploy just once, deploy anywhere, uh, support their tests, uh, their test cases, uh, continuous delivery, and all those types of things. So, uh, you know, just really, really powerful things when you go into beyond the topic of coding and into the topic of, of delivery and how this all fits into the enterprise infrastructure. So uh, with that said, let's jump into our demo. And let me talk about quickly what what we have done here. So here we have a demo website uh, that I kind of silly called Carfinity. Um, and this is a website that's sort of based on the idea that um, uh, based on the uh, idea of this new framework uh, that Sitefinity provides. So. Uh, this is a web application that, in theory, would uh, allow, enable you to browse cars virtually, look at to any kind of data, and then uh, find locations, look at different dealerships, um, and all these things that typically an application needs, needs to support. So here are the components that we're going to take apart uh, today during our demonstration, and the components that we, we will talk about um, in in great detail as it comes to you know this limo little demo website that I've built. First of all, this is ported directly through a Bootstrap template, just a Bootstrap template. I believe it's called uh, Agency. There we go. It's a one page bootstrap theme that knows absolutely nothing about Sitefinity, and yet it takes literally minutes to kind of port this over, move over all the styles, fit it into the infrastructure, and make this into um, a nice uh, a nice template for our website so that, you know, we kind of look the same way uh, and we're able to manage everything through through the system, through Sitefinity. 
Uh, now, the second part of this is that uh, in something what I'll show you after talking about how we set up things like templating for our application, how we set up things like the design, is we're going to talk about data. And here uh, I have a relatively complex data structure that can get much more complex, but essentially I have a data structure that maintains different makes, models, and cars. Um, and is able to maintain various information for them, like galleries, like videos, like images, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and not only that, but I'm also able to add relationship to things like dealerships, to be able to assign different dealerships to different cars, different cars to different dealerships, and so on and so forth. So just an idea of having um, a structure, a data structure that a typical enterprise application might maintain. And we're going to show how, how you can build all of these and control the styling and the template using clean and beautiful Razor and Bootstrap and, um, and templating without actually having to deal with any of the other complexity. Um, and then, uh, of course, the last part that we're going to talk about is, well, what if you had something custom, right? What if you wanted to build a custom component that helps you kind of configure your own car, a car configurator or a map or a grid or a chart or anything like that, anything that you guys do in terms of the scope and requirements of, of your project and how you can build that beautifully using MVC and then how you can utilize the Angular JS uh, backend framework to build a custom backend for it, something we call widget designers. And for that, for all of this, we're going to use uh, what I recently talked about, uh, Project Feather, which again is a core part of the Sitefinity 8.0 framework and it's uh, it's a part of Sitefinity that allows you to uh, to build things like that. It has a bunch of MVC stock widgets that are there for you to do things like navigation and images and galleries and things like that. It has a really good resource package framework with with a bunch of uh, packages like Bootstrap package built out of, built right in. So this will help us maintain our template and then be able to deliver it to multiple projects. Uh, it has a mobile first philosophy, so everything is built to be responsive. And then it has a, a bunch of framework components that, that are intended to help you work faster. So this designer's framework will help you customize the back end. Um, and we have uh, a convention based philosophy. And of course, everything is open source. So you can look into how everything is built, you can contribute if you want to, you can um, uh, you can uh, fork the code and things like that. We support it, we ship updates uh, on a weekly manner and we deliver more and more things to you as a part of that open source framework. And not just framework components, but essentially everything and anything that we've discovered clients would ever need. Anything from something like a block selector and a taxonomy selector to uh, scaffolding to uh, different widgets uh, to uh, what I really like here. Let me see if I find it. To, you know, just the different client components, like client components for drag and drop, which is just a simple Angular directive that may have taken us weeks or even months to develop, but we package it as one single component to you and you're able to reuse that. So think of that as, um, you know, just a really cool Angular or, or client side based component framework for any kind of application. So um, let's get started uh, real quick. First part of this is the template, right? So um, the template here, as I mentioned, is ported and based entirely on uh, on Bootstrap, and it utilizes the the framework that I just talked about. The um, uh, the MVC based framework that allows me to do all these things. And um, so this is Sitefinity. This is the backend of Sitefinity that lets me control every single one of these aspects. So the backend of Sitefinity lets me do things like um, 
manage pages, manage content, upload all these makes, models and cars and dealerships, manage if I want to e-commerce, if I want to have people buy the cars online, um, or uh, manage any administrative tasks. And since we're taking a step-by-step -step approach, you know, when you guys start a project, typically design is one of the first thing that you handle. So, so here is how, how this framework works. We have these these templates and here you can see our agency template uh, just uh, right showing up in the um, in the interface and this template contains uh, our navigation this contains possibly you know a kind of a content blog that shows our text uh, a bunch of placeholders for a portfolio of cars for for locations and anything like that and then we can start building out the different pages uh, of our application and start filling in this information and what's even better is uh, I as a developer don't have to do that I can let somebody from the marketing team for the business team uh, do that for me and, uh, and support themselves in doing that. So for those uh, of you who are new to Sitefinity, this is really true to, to the Sitefinity mantra of being uh, you know, able to bring everything together in a very visual fashion with just drag and drop components um, that show up here. All this is pure MVC. There's not a single um, there's not a single widget. There's not a single component that is based on web forms that is based on web forms controls. Uh, you could add a web forms controls here if you wanted to, but right now we're we're just going to be working with pure MVC. Uh, now the design. How does the design here show up? So essentially, um, what Sitefinity is is an ASP.NET web application. It's just a web application. Uh, and in it, you can house uh, any kind of code, uh, including MVC code, including um, MVC layouts and templates uh, and things like that. Uh, and so this web application sort of looks like this. Let me go ahead and open our project. So it looks like this, right? It has um, it has a video, Visual Studio solution associated with it, and it's essentially a directory that looks like this. Uh, it has an app data folder, a bunch of other folders. Uh, it has some configuration that maintains a connection string to our database. It can have uh, different types of ASPX pages or any kind of web forms code, web forms controls, and it has uh, a bunch of MVC code. So it's just a folder of an ASP.NET application, plain and simple, web config, global ASACs, all the different things that fall under uh, an ASP.NET application. A critical folder in that application is this folder called resource packages. So within resource packages, out of the box here, uh, if you have Feather uh, enabled, which you um, which you install just through the back end through one click, um, what you have here is uh, three packages that we have delivered for you. So Bootstrap, Foundation, and Semantic UI are three packages, and you can build another package if you want to. So um, essentially, um, these resource packages contain your template in the form of an MVC layout as well as the templates of every single component that you want to have. So in our case, from, from our agency bootstrap template, what I did essentially is just extract everything that this GitHub repository gave me for that bootstrap template. So just took all the code from there, extracted it, and here I have their CSS, their image files, their JavaScript, their less files, uh, you know, reference to font awesome, reference to different uh, custom fonts, and so on and so forth. So this is all coming from um, from a bootstrap template, right? I can just look at here at the CSS and just change the CSS as I normally would uh, within within any other uh, web project. 
Um, and then we also have the layouts, right, which are under our MVC folder. Under our MVC folder, we have different views for everything. So uh, as an example here, if we were to look into our navigation, basically, this is the template for our navigation. It's a plain and simple CSHTML file that I get to, to play with, that I get to add just um, different um, uh, different components to. And uh, we generate these by default for you. You get all the widgets styled, all the templates styled in a resource package, anything from search to login to image and things like that, but you can modify them. So if you want to have a custom class and if you don't want a button and instead of button here you want a span, um, and if you don't want uh, you know, uh, list items and you want something else instead, then you can change every single level of this. Um, anything that Cytonity generates is just plain text that you can you can access uh, and you can bind to the model and, and just add things like the page name, the page URL, the page title, and things like that. So, um, you know, all these are managed into one folder that you can version, that you can track, that you can deploy between m multiple applications, and every application that you paste this to um, will now have a bootstrap agency template with a bootstrap agency-like styled navigation that you get control over every single line of HTML. So. Um, you know, in general, uh, this is also true for the overall layout of the page, right? So if I look into what layout my page uses, essentially what I did is, again, look into the boot, bootstrap agency template, just looked at what kind of placeholders they have and what kind of scripts they call. And that's pretty much it. Once you know that, and here you also you know, get the source on GitHub or anything like that, then you can add these placeholders here and just enable them through the backend so that you can start adding and dragging, dropping things like that. Um, this is just pure HTML, pure Razor, um, you can add any type of link uh, references, style sheet, font references, and anything like that. The only thing that is proprietary to Sitefinity in this case is uh, these helper classes that tell us, okay, well, make this a placeholder, right, and call this portfolio. So by making this a uh, placeholder and calling this portfolio, this little portfolio section appears here, and I can do every kind of magic with it. Um, another part is um, is that you get the ability to basically build as many layouts as you want. You don't have to register them. Everything is convention based. So if I go ahead and uh, copy a layout and I create a new CSHTML file right within this layouts folder, um, I will get um, just a brand new um, template that's called, you know, something like agency dot uh, landing page or something like that, whatever the name of my view is. So everything gets bound by convention and you can, you can add different components from there. Another cool thing is the grid system. So essentially, as we're talking about perfect alignment with things like bootstrap, we don't mean just loading the lists. We also mean uh, a being able to add any kind of bootstrap based grid widgets, uh, different kinds of layouts like container, div with a wrapper container, like a three by three grid, like a nav bar, like a row. And these are all, all files, again, version controlled and everything, all files that are kept here under our grid system folder. So just a bunch of HTML files that have our container, our single column grid, our multi-column grids, and all these things that are generated by Bootstrap. Same with semantic UI, same with um, foundation, uh, same with any custom framework you use, and even Sitefinity by itself has its own framework of, of just different layouts and components that you can use that is, once again, responsive by default. You can control the responsive design. You can control the sizing. There's a lot of really cool business functionality. So integration with, with any kind of component like that as a part of the resource package. 
Moving on from resource packages, if I go back here for a second, um, I want to talk about uh, something else, which is, um, which is this idea of data. So the concept of, uh, of data, especially in an enterprise scenario, can get really complex. See, here we, uh, even in a one single page app side that we're doing right here, uh, we have we have a fair bit of complexity with data. We, we need to have makes, models, cars. These cars can have different relationships between each other. One can support this and not that. They can have different components. They can have different dealerships. They can have location associated with them, uh, different media items and things like that. And in a perfect case in an, uh, in an application, especially if you're building something like MVC from scratch, what you would do is you know start with something like Entity Framework, figure out the routing, figure out the structure, code the logic, code the API, and all of these things uh, up until the point where you get to the Razor template and you get to do things that, are, that look pretty like that. Now, what we enable you to do is kind of skip all that process um, and tackle this in a structure first fashion. So essentially here under administration and under module builder, uh, you can do any kind of data structure that you can possibly think of in the form of a module. But going back to our infrastructure slide, we take care of the bottom part, right? We take care of the infrastructure, we take care of the backend UI, we take care of everything, but provide you the extensibility to change things. So here in our cars module, as an example, we have, um, a bunch of information like dealers, like dealerships that could have titles, descriptions, images, cars associated with them. And we also have a hierarchical relationships, which inside Finity can be any hierarchy, any levels, any number of children, um, any type of dependency. So here we have something simple like makes models and cars and makes would have titles, logos, messages, information, models would have a little bit more associated with them. That nice gallery that you saw on the i8 car, that's a gallery field that I support here, which is just a number of related images. Uh, we can have um, different texts that present us with um, information, a text that we're able to edit with a rich text editor, uh, uh, with, with an HTML editor, and so on and so forth. So talking about any data structure, you can have essentially any field. This table can be multiple pages scrolling long if you want to, if you want to support a complex infrastructure. Um, and the types of fields vary from simple flat fields or a Boolean or a date time to, to relationships, right? To be able to associate something like a dealership with a car so that we are able to present the user with options of where to take a car for a test drive. So just by doing that and just by adding this, this becomes part of my infrastructure um, and I'm able to to add dealerships to cars and, and edit them and translate them and deploy them in an automated site sync environment and things like that. And even if I click that, my Razor templates, again, uh, going back to the MVC, everything that you see as a template is just pure Razor. Uh, but if I update the templates, it will generate a nice looking Razor template that, that will display all that data in a nice looking detail view. Uh, and so, so by clicking finish, I just changed the infrastructure of what Sitefinity calls a content module, right? So uh, within this content module here, we would have all this information about the various makes, about the various models, about uh, the different cars that they contain. So within BMW, if I just click in, I would, I would have that auto information automatically. I don't need to make any kind of configuration. And as I click edit here, I would see all the fields that I previously have determined, including the new field that I just added because, you know, uh, marketing came to me and decided that they need to have um, dealerships and not just, um, uh, not just related to images. So we'll just add a couple of dealerships related to this car and we'll figure out this, this one-to-many or many-to-many relationship. So 
all the UI, all the backend UI gets generated automatically for you. All the things like scheduling, infrastructure, as I said, translation, multilingual, get taken care of automatically. What you can focus on is building beautiful designs and beautiful experiences for the front end using this type of information. Um, and, uh, and essentially, all these things are once again fully in your control, fully templated, and fully and purely MVC. What Sitefinity does is, if you, if you notice here, we had our homepage, and this homepage contained, uh, was based on our template, contained all the elements that the template provided, like the nav and the image and things like that, and it also contained a bunch of widgets. So essentially what these cars are, are just a widget, and it's a widget that Sitefinity provides out of the box. So here we have our cars widgets and we have MVC widgets for everything, makes, models, cars, dealers, dealerships, and these widgets can get pretty fancy in their logic. You can control things like filtering, you can control things like master detail pages, uh, in, in this case we call them list settings and single item settings. You can control things like limits, uh, you can filter cars by selected models, so let's just say we want only the Priuses to show up here or anything like that, then you can do that as well. Um, this, by the way, is the little component that you can extend using AngularJS. This is what we call the designer framework, the ability for a business user to control the presentation um, is something that, that you can provide to, to your end users. So, um, so here, uh, here are our cars and here are our models and this is again styled beautifully using our bootstrap template. And the way this works is, once again, I've taken the code um, that this requires, which is just a four, you know, a three by three grid view. Um, and I've just styled the widget template that Sitefinity automatically generated for me. So if you look into the list of models, here you would see that I have, you know, a bootstrap class and then another bootstrap class uh, for, for the three by three widgets. And then I just plug in the fields. So uh, any type of HTML, there's nothing proprietary around that. And I plug in the fields by just adding a simple dot notation. I get the model and I can bind to my car. So for each car within the list of cars, I can uh, take the title, just item.fields.title, nothing more complex than that. And then item.fields.image would be the image, item.fields.location would be the location. Um, and you can access all these properties like that using a very clean, simple dot notation with any possible property you can think of. Um, and Sitefinity will generate these razor views for you by default. Um, a default one would look something like this. Uh, where it just says, okay, here's the, the description field, here's how it looks, this is a div, um, here's the location field, and it will Im embed a little map if you have a Google API key, here's the image field, model item fields image, and things like that. So Sitefinity will generate these by default, it will scaffold them for you, and you can even use Razor to control the scaffolding, which is, which is a lot of fun. I do this because um, you know, for example, I don't, I create a lot of modules during a project and um, I want them automatically to display in a kind of a bootstrap grid. So, um, so I just make the bootstrap classes, the default scaffolding classes, and that takes me and makes me scalable going forward. Uh, if you're an agency or someone like that that delivers a lot of projects, that's extremely useful. So you can go ahead and make changes and make any kind of, uh, of modifications to, um, uh, to essentially any kind of widget. So uh, here, for example, we have our details view for our, you know, our BMW car. This got automatically generated in a kind of a beautiful URL. Now, just imagine for a second how many steps it takes you in an MVC application to get there. And in this case, it was point and click and just drag and drop a widget and, uh, and style some razor. Um, and then you get full control over the URLs and presentation and anything like that. Um, so, uh, so last but very certainly not least, uh, I wanted to talk about 
deployment options and uh, first of all before that I wanted to talk about logic um, since this is a webinar about MVC uh, and what I've just shown so far is razor templates I wanted to show you how you can do things like custom logic the truth of the matter is Razor templates will get you a long way. Supporting things like collections of items, relationships, hierarchies, um, you know, adding dealerships to cars, cars to dealerships, images, galleries, and things like that. Um, any kind of application scenario, of course, cars is just the example. Most of these can be done using templates. Um, and you can put your templates in source control, you can put them on the file system, and you can deliver and deploy them as a part of the package um, and ship them within uh, different applications. So um, the beautiful thing about this is you don't really have to write custom controller code all the time, but sometimes you do, right? You need a seat selector or a map or a dealership locator or something like that, and Sitefinity does not ship with an out-of-the-box widget for that because it's something custom. Well, in this case, you just fire up Visual Studio and we get, uh, we basically put our MVC developer pants on uh, in a way and start developing these models, views, and controllers. Uh, now, I uh, wanted to show you something simple, something qu quick, which is a re really cool trick here. There's a plugin for Visual Studio called Sitefinity Thunder that basically does a lot of scaffolding for me. So, you know, if, if I do something, I don't have to create a model class, a controller class, uh, a view class, razor view. I don't have to do all of that. I just use the template and it does that for me and it has a really cool template for an MVC widget. So I just install Sitefinity Thunder from the Visual Studio Gallery and I create my widget which would be kind of a hello world example. So these these things, these guys will get you pretty far uh, in terms of um, hello world examples for, uh, for different things. And, and MVC is just one example of that. I will not create a designer simply because I'll show you how this is done using, using Angular, but I will create my widget here real quick. So um, again, this widget, uh, Hello World, now created three files for me. It created the Hello World controller, standard MVC controller inherits from System Web MVC controller, so nothing funny there. Uh, standard MVC model, which is called Hello World Model, which is a POCO class with, again, nothing funny there. And then a standard Hello World folder with a razor view, which just displays the message from the model. So absolutely standard MVC code. Um, you just have to put it in a special co folder by convention, and that's pretty much it. And you can work with that in the context of Sitefinity. Uh, in this example, our controller logic is pretty simple. Uh, it just um, binds to a message property. And if it doesn't exist, it displays hello world. If it does, it will display our um, our message in, in some kind of a way. So um, essentially here, uh, what is the only proprietary thing that Sitefinity puts is this little directive, which basically says make this available to Sitefinity. Uh, create a widget, call it Hello World, plug it in the toolbox, uh, get post, put it in the MVC widget section, and that's it. Uh, this widget will appear, it will be drag and drop, um, and uh, if I build my solution, uh, it will make itself available to me in the page. Just because um, I've rambled on for a bit and uh, we're, we're almost out of time, I'll just show you um, another widget that uh, I've already created. Basically, I've generated the same widget with the same concept and just show you how it shows up within the, within the pages section. So here, here are our pages, and if I go to any page or any template for that matter, um, I will have a kind of a hello world widget or a toolbox of basically any, any widgets, including custom MVC. And I can just use drag and drop to put them into any page. So this, we don't have any message created. Uh, it will say hello world. If we add a message, 
and say just something like hello angular which I'm gonna get to in a little bit it will go ahead and display hello angular instead so um, you're wondering where this fancy little HTML uh, showed up from and this is where where the angular component plugs in uh, essentially uh, as as we can write views for what shows up on the front end we can also write a view of how people edit things and this is just bound by convention right if we look at our views folder if I call something a designer view, so designer view dot my view, any kind of view name, then I can I can add again a razor file, a CSHTML file with any kind of markup. And Citinity provides helpers and directives for a lot of cool things. So it provides a directive for adding a Kendo editor. Uh, it provides a director for a directive for adding things like an image widget. So let me go ahead and show you how this is done. So for example, an image field would look something like this. It would be SF image field. And if I go ahead and refresh that, it will give me an image selector. And it provides me with just various different components about everything and anything I can possibly think of dynamic context selector, taxonomy selectors, um, all these types of things. And you can bind all these things to your model or to your controller um, and you get all these beautiful functionality that again probably took us a month to develop and to make it beautiful and test it and everything like that and you just get a line or two of code to use and plug it into any kind of custom application, custom interface that you're building. So um, so that again fits into the entire paradigm of enterprise. Uh, this is also something you can separate on a resource package. This is also something you can version control. This is also something you can deploy easily. This is something that gets automatically installed by convention. Uh, so uh, it makes things easy uh, in terms of an enterprise uh, infrastructure where you have to take all these into account and you have to have testability and things like that. Um, along with, with the components that you build and you deliver. And the last five minutes or so, uh, I'll get to a few of your questions later on as well, but I wanted to also talk about uh, some of the things that go beyond uh, development. Now, uh, heads up, I haven't even covered uh, a lot of the content management features and a lot of the great features that Sitefinity has in terms of connectivity, in terms of managing things like workflow, in terms of even things like managing RSS feeds that get generated or mobile apps that get generated or responsive design and things like that. So we'll definitely recommend checking that out if you're new to the system since, since this webinar was uh, extremely technical by popular demand. Um, but it does have a lot of um, infrastructure that helps you scale a lot in an enterprise environment. So case in point, let's just say that Carfinity, our little virtual car dealership concept, takes off uh, big time and uh, it becomes a global brand, right? So we have now Carfinity, but we may also need to create a site for Carfinity Europe, right? So we just do that in an enterprise multi-site management infrastructure and we just create a new site, right? Carfinity.eu. Um, and in this website, we can have any type of languages, any type of infrastructure, um, any type of permissions. It can be a completely different department that's managing this site and it's managing it in, in German, French, and say Spanish or anything like that. If only I was able to look it up, Spanish. And we can add those as languages to our site. Um, and we can deliver a brand new site from one infrastructure, one deployment, one code base, one upgrade, one template base, and so on and so forth. So as we go ahead and continue doing that, uh, you can reuse pretty much everything that you can think of. You can reuse taxonomy, you can reuse libraries, you can re reuse uh, news, blogs, events, uh, e-commerce, you can uh, make our cars available for this um, uh, for this module, but also you know 
give it its own set of cars to maintain and manage and things like that. So now this becomes a whole new website uh, that only a fraction of the users can can look into and uh, this website can reuse the same template, that can reuse the same images, can reuse the same code base. Once you deliver a package of, of templates or Razor files, or once you deliver a brand new widget that you built using MVC, it can become immediately available for this brand new website as well. And you can multiply that times infinity, right? Um, and the economies of scale here are tremendous. We have many clients that have 30, 40 regions at least with, with multiple languages and having to deploy and manage a separate application, upgrade a separate application for each of those is just a tremendous amount of investment and work. Uh, well, this is just point and click, right? And you have your brand new website and you can create as many of those as you want and manage the permissions for those um, and things like that. And uh, not only that, but you also have um, you also have the ability to uh, basically stage and synchronize between different environments. Let me go ahead and see if I have that enabled here or available in my. Yep. There we go. So here is a module for staging and syncing. So if you have staging and development and testing and things like that, and you have a complex delivery chain, uh, then you can just um, create your staging environment, let people create some cars, test some functionality, add a new widget here and there. And then just with a point and click, you can say, OK, now the European website goes to Asia uh, or it goes to a server in France or something like that. And the website for um, for let's say um, Malaysia goes to a server in Malaysia and anything like that and the website for Malaysia has a separate workflow with those authors and, and so on and so forth so as you do that uh, you can set up any type of complex enterprise uh, infrastructure and have that available on the bat so uh, again, here we just add our servers, add our synchronization, add our settings, and we're ready to go. Now, in the interest of time, I just wanted to share with you uh, a few more words about where you can go on and learn more. So Sitefinity.com is obviously a great resource. We have a, um, a bunch of information about the product, about every feature coming from uh, basic content management to the deliver the development platform that I just talked about to system integrations and different connectors, enterprise deployment and delivery, experience management and so on. Uh, and even some of the marketing functionality that we have as a part of our analytics offering. Uh, there, there's a try now button. So uh, everything you saw me do is available for you to try if you download a trial version of Sitefinity. Um, it will just generate a project like this, well, sort of like this, a blank project for you, and you can um, you can start working with this out of the box. Uh, the only thing is you need to go under Modules and Services and under Feather. And, and if this is disabled, just enable Feather so that you are able to do all these types of things that I've shown before. Now, when it comes to the Feather functionality, the Feather components that we talked about, the ability to add these packages, the templates, uh, all these out-of-the-box widgets like the dynamic content widget that showed up, uh, this is all something that you can learn more about on the Project Feather website, which is projectfeather.sitefinity.com. Um, and there you see a bunch of information about Feather, including the GitHub project um, and things like that. A really cool page here that you can look through all the component is the project progress page, which shows you essentially what are the things we have available, what are the components that we have available as a part of Feather. So for example, you know, we have all the login widgets available, and if you want to know how to use them, there's a link to the documentation here real quick. Uh, if you want to know how to use the registration widget, there's a link to the documentation um, and the wiki so that you can go through all of these components and look through how to change templates and um, how to um, work with dynamic content, how to work with blogs, how to get started, how to install Feather, um, or you know how to upgrade it and things like that. 
So uh, with that said, um, y with that said, yeah, I'll I'll be taking a few of your questions. Um, um, I'll be taking a few of your questions offline since we are um, a little bit uh, beyond uh, beyond the endpoint, and we'll publish a blog post to to actually um, show all the answers to these questions. And once again, I would like to thank all of you for joining. Uh, there's actually been an incredible crowd today. Um, a lot of you showed up for this webinar, which again is is a validation of how big of a topic and how special of a topic MVC is for a lot of us. Um, I know this webinar has has covered things on a kind of a very high level, but hopefully it gives you an idea of how to get started and um, and become productive in an enterprise environment, touching 